Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a Pelican nib with the comparison video. I'm going to be comparing the uh, 14 karat gold fine nib and the 14 karat gold medium nib. Uh, the pens I will be using today, I'm using three. Uh, these are the first two. I'm using my Pelican M605 Stress Em On. This has a medium nib. You guys have seen this pen a few times on my channel. And then for comparison between two Pelicans, which the second one will be introduced shortly, uh, or my second Pelican anyway, is a Leonardo Momento Zero with a medium nib. This is a Bach nib, I believe, uh, which I'm just going to use as like a, you guys will be able to see what the Pelican nibs look like compared to just like a regular Western medium nib, like a generic, like Bach or Yovo or something like that. So the, Pelican pen, I'm going to be using uh, the fine nib. This is a medium. It is new. It's the newest addition to my collection. I'm so excited to show you guys this. <laughs> Here it is. This is a 205 Amethyst. This pen was released in 2015. It was the special edition. And by the way, my fingers are covered in ink. They look dirty, but I've washed them 10,000 times. This was released in 2015 with a matching ink, Amethyst. They have been, let's just say, difficult to get the past couple of years or few years or four years or so. They are astronomically priced if you are able to find one. Uh, there is a set, a pen and ink set on eBay right now for $1,000. So that's psychotic. But the story with this, I was on Peyton Street Pens earlier this week and I was, uh, I clicked on their new items tab and this pen was on the front page and I had just looked at their new items like earlier that day or the day before. So this pen had just been listed and I saw it and my very first thought was buy it. Don't hesitate don't wait don't try to do any research just buy this pen because if you don't purchase this pen this second it will be gone within half an hour somebody will buy this pen because they will see the price this thing was listed for 145 dollars they will see this price and they will buy it so i i i went in i read the description really quick it said it was in near mint condition uh, just some handwear, which I don't, I guess that just means somebody had used it lightly. I'm not sure. But I went in, I read the description really quickly. I like speed read that thing. I added it to my cart and I bought it. And it got here yesterday and there is nothing wrong with it. It's in perfect condition. The piston is so smooth. Uh, the nib sucked ass. I realigned the tines. They were really misaligned and it was super scratchy. I did smooth it some. Uh, it's writing acceptable but I actually have swapped the nibs out. So I, the, coming back to this pen, I've been kind of falling out of love with super broad nibs and this is a super broad writer. So I um, have been just leaning more towards my pens that have thinner nibs lately. So I thought I would purchase a fine nib for this pen. I ordered the 600, which is gold and silver, and it came in yesterday. This it, Both of these came in on the same day, the nib for this pen, and then this pen came in from Peyton Street. And I did a crazy thing <laughs> at the time, and I put that 600 nib in my 205. I did do some research before I did it. Um, People were saying, some people were saying, oh, you can't put the 600 nib into a 200 or 205 or whatever. And then some people were saying, oh, I do it no problem. All my 200s have 600 nibs. So I screwed it in the section and it fit perfectly. There's, it fits fine into the section. The main issue was the cap. So I very slowly inserted this into the cap and I literally had this part of the pin in my ear as I was turning because I was, I was trying to hear if the metal, the tip of the nib was scraping against the cap and I didn't hear any grinding or anything. So I, I feel it's okay. Uh, the nib is riding fine. It hasn't, I've looked at it with my loop. It looks fine. Um, I don't think it's touching the inside of the cap. And if it is, it's not doing anything to the nib as far as I can tell. So we're good. We are good. And this nib writes 
wonderfully. Um, it was skipping like a little bit on downstrokes sometimes. So I did smooth it a little bit using micro mesh uh, or mylar paper, wh whatever it is, the gray strip you get from Goulet. And it's doing much better. I'm not a huge, I don't have huge issues with pins if they like skip sometimes on downstrokes. I, it's not a huge deal to me. So I'm not super bothered by it. Um, like I said, the smoothing fixed it for the most part. It maybe does it just like, I don't know, very rarely now. I've been riding with it quite a bit. Um, but overall, the nib is great. So we're going to be doing the nib comparisons I have rambled on for long enough. Uh, let's look at the nibs individually. Or individually, side by side. So we've got the um, 600 nib on the left in a fine and the 605 nib on the right in a medium. And let's look at the tipping. So we got a little little fat blob on that medium nib and a tiny little blob on the fine. Very beautiful nibs. I really like Pelican's nibs. I really like the two-tone. I have said before on the channel, I'm not a fan of gold trim or gold nibs, but if it's mostly silver with some gold, I think it looks really classy and I really like it. That's why I got the uh, 600 or for because it, it looks really good with the gray as well so I thought the gold and the silver would look good with the gray and it does I did put this nib on the stress -em on but just where, where did the focus <laughs> there we go I just really think it's a beautiful beautiful nib love the imprint all right so anyway let's do the nib comparison uh, I'm going to be using uh, Tomoe River Paper, Leuchtturm, Rhodia, and Midori now that I have some Midori notebooks because I know a lot of people use Midori. So we're going to be starting out with the smallest nib, the fine. Okay. I'm going to zoom in just a tad. And I have all three of these pens inked up with Deatramentis Aubergine. I don't know what that is. Just ignore that bee. That's a, it's a weird looking bee. So you can see that the medium is quite a bit thicker than the fine nib with the Pelican. So now we're going to do the uh, Leonardo. This nib is not the smoothest nib, but I don't plan on keeping this pen, so I'm not going to mess with it. It's, it's not scratchy, it's just super feedbacky in it. It could be smoother. Uh, but anyway, this is the Tomoe. You can see the difference there. The fine nib is maybe a tiny bit drier than the medium. I did tune the medium to write a little wetter, so the ink looks a little darker as well. I forget to cross my T and stress them on. So I would say quite clearly that the pelican fine nib looks more 
um, similar to the Leonardo Memento Zero medium nib, like the Bach Yoga. I imagine Bach and Yoga are going to be quite similar with the nib width. The medium is definitely more of like, I'd say a Western broad Pelicans nibs run much wetter and broader than your standard like Yovo or Bach nibs. And again, I really used to enjoy this thickness, but I find myself moving backwards and wanting to use thinner nibs like this. I'm very happy with the width of the fine nib. Uh, very, very happy. I really like it. All right, so that was the Tomoe. Let's uh, do Midori. So this is the blank Midori uh, notebook I got from uh, Baumkuchen. That was in my last video. Oh, you can see there it skipped just a tiny bit, which again doesn't really, really bother me. It, it could be way worse. <laughs> So Midori. I forgot to put medium nib. Again, these two are about the same. Medium is obviously quite a bit thicker. Now let's do roadie. Sorry, ink just came out of one of my pens. And this is, uh, even though I'm not a fan of Rhodia paper, this is good because you can see what the nibs look like if you're, if you're the type of person who enjoys dotted. So, so this, these um, dots are five uh, millimeter grid. So fine's really good for this kind of dotted. Um, you're not gonna, it's not gonna look too full or I don't know, thick, like you have plenty of room to form the letters. The thicker your nib gets, the harder it can be to contain everything. 
It's one of the reasons that I like blank paper because I don't feel constrained. I used to use dotted and lined and everything. But with blank, I don't feel like I am confined into little spaces because my handwriting verges on the larger side. Unfortunately, I like dainty writing, but that's just not, oh, it's not the way I roll. <laughs> Probably train myself to write a little thinner. And this is cream paper again, but the light's making it look white. So I'd say the Pelican Fine Nib is maybe just a tad, tad thicker than this one on the Rhodia. And I don't really see any feathering. So that is Rhodia. And last we have Leuchtturm. Oopsie, it skipped there just a little bit. And like Charm has five millimeter dot spacing as well, I think. And there might be a tiny, 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 tiny bit of feathering with the medium nib, but not the fine nib or the Leonardo medium nib, just the Pelican medium. That thing lays down a ton of ink, so I'm not surprised that there's a little feathering. So that concludes the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know. I will see you next time. See you later.